Now, if we think about how these forms are, to the end user, it's still just one big form, right? So they come in here. Yeah, sure, I wrote things out a little bit differently, but they're going to only hit submit or save one time. And so the question is, can we combine a bunch of forms, like more than two in there, to manage essentially a query set, to manage all of this data? Now, of course you can. Django already has shown us this inside of the Django admin. So if you go on any given instance, you can actually see the data that we can manage right in the admin. And so we want to implement that here. And we do that using a tool called a form set and more specifically the model form set factory. We'll implement this in a second. But what I wanna do is first look at what your intuition might be given what we know about model forms. Now to me, my intuition would be, hey, let's initialize an empty list and then let's go ahead and iterate through the entire ingredient set, right? So the entire qu query set. And then let's go ahead and initialize a new ingredient form. So this based off of this instance, right? So it's gonna be identical to this just for a different model. And then we're gonna go ahead and append each one of these forms into that empty list of forms. Now, the reason we do this is because this query set, of course, is gonna be an arbitrary value. So it really wouldn't make sense to have a variable for each one, but rather just loop through all of those arbitrary values and set them equal to this instance. So far, so good, hopefully. And then of course, once we actually do this, we would want to pass it into context, just like that. And then inside of this all method here, well, this part probably doesn't work, right? So we'd probably have to do something like uh, my forms and then say form dot or do a list comprehension. So form dot is valid for form in those ingredient forms, right? And then of course we could also call all on this method here. Okay. So my forms is valid and you know, something like that. That's probably not the greatest. We could also just do my or form is valid. The very first one and form dot is valid. Okay. And then inside of this method, assuming that these are all valid, we could probably do this. So for form, let's say two in ingredient forms and run all that. I no longer need this print statement, okay? And so this is actually, to me, a very logical way of how we could execute this. And what you might be wondering is if this is the best practice of a way to do it. Well, no, Django has something built in. Right, we already talked about it, but that would be a much better practice is to have this for something that's already built in. And more specifically, this might work fine for our current query set. Well, the question is, will it work for dynamically adding new items to this query set? So if I added another recipe here, will it work now? Now, hopefully you know, the answer should be no because we are basing all of these forms off of previously existing ingredient objects. This is also why I didn't do this in the create view, right? So the create view didn't have it, so we could illustrate this concept or this challenge that would come off of maybe what your intuition would be. And so let's go ahead and take a look at how we would actually implement this using the model form set factory. So at the very top, we're gonna go ahead and do from Django.forms.models import the model form set factory. So this is incredibly common. So if you forget, just think of this in terms of the model form for query sets, right? So model form for query sets. That's kind of what we're trying to do here. So it's saying, take this one single instance of a model form and turn it into a bunch of instances like the logic that we just went through. So this form set factory, what it actually ends up doing is it ends up creating a form set class. So I'm gonna go ahead and say form set equals to this model so form set factory. So it's like this, right? So it's not creating this instance yet, it's actually creating the class that we will use to create the actual form set instance. Okay, so just bear with me for a moment. And so what we need in here is the actual model itself. Then we can pass in the optional argument of a form. In our case, it's gonna be this recipe ingredient form, but I'll just put model form for now. Uh, and then we can also declare stuff like extra, some, something we saw in the admin itself for the tabular inline. And so this is kind of the format here. 
Of course, the documentation goes into it a lot more. It will show you all of the various arguments that can be passed in here. And by all means, read more on them because they are fascinating. But anyway, so this is the, the format that we're going to work with here. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this original one that we talked about. Let's get rid of these. And also this down here. I'm going to comment this one down here out though. And so now I'm going to go ahead and leave this in as a comment and we'll go ahead and use the ingredient form. So this time I'm going to call it ingredient form set and it's going to be equal to that model form set. We have to grab the model. The model itself we did not import yet. So let's go ahead and import it. Okay. So there's our model and there's our form right there. Okay. I no longer need form two. Let's get rid of that. So again, this is now the class of the form set itself. So we're going to have to initialize that form set. This time I'm going to go ahead and just call it form set. And this is where we pass in request.post or none. And then the actual query set we are trying to update. Now there's a few different ways on how we can get that query set. Number one, it's obviously based off of the object itself. So inside of our model, we can look at the object and grab the query set this way. Or what we could do is just basically go off of what I just had, which was something like this. Okay, and parentheses at the end. And of course, this might have values or it might have no values, which is fine. We can do it either way. But really, we just wanna make sure that we have an instance of that query set in one way or the other. Okay, cool. So now that we have this form set in here, um, we have several things that we're gonna to wanna to do. First of all, I'm gonna get rid of this right here. And we're gonna bring back the all call in this for the form. And then form set is valid as well. Okay, so now it's gonna do our original form as we saw before, as well as the form set itself. So that's pretty cool. And in fact, I can actually do for form in the form set. And now we can go ahead and do this same concept here, right? And let's go ahead and uncomment these. And we probably shouldn't have to reset the parent element, but this right here is now showing me that up here in the create view, that's actually how I'd go about doing it, is I would for sure want to have that recipe parent in there. And really, I could say if recipe parent child.recipe is none, then we'll go ahead and do that, right? And then we'll go ahead and say print added new, something along those lines, right? And so we'll go ahead and get rid of this. Now, the form set can also be called save directly too. So that is certainly something you can do, similar to like the actual form itself. But doing the iteration makes a lot of sense for these elements here. Okay, cool. So now... We have a form and a form set. Let's go ahead and take a look. In our template itself, no longer do we have if form two, now if form set, and then form set as P, okay? So going back into our view, let's make sure our form set is added into the context itself. There we go. So let's save everything. Let's look at our view, and let's make sure the server's running. Looks like maybe we have some sort of import error. Ah, no, I have a syntax error. This valid method needs a parentheses on both sides. Okay, so we save that, refresh in here. And now I see grilled chicken twice. Great, so this was, what did we call this one? I think this was supposed to be chicken pasta. Chicken pasta, we probably never saved it. And so grilled chicken one pound, and then I'll say pasta noodles, and we'll do 16 ounces. <laughs> we save that. Chicken pasta, grilled chicken, pasta noodles, great, data saved. Let's look in the admin. I'll refresh in the admin. We've got chicken pasta, grilled chicken, pounds, all that stuff, pasta noodles, cool. And what do you know, pasta noodles is also one pound. I did that on purpose. Okay, so um, let's see here. We now see exactly how to add, well, manage, not add, but manage the query set. So this shows us a new method of things that we could do, right? So of course I have it where it's associated to something that's incredibly practical as it relates to these two models. But the question of course could be, 
hey, can I do this on all of my recipes? And the answer, of course, is yes. You can have a query set for any given user's recipes so they can change things on the fly and change multiple at once. And you just do that by using the model form set. But this is cool because it also allows me to have data about the original you know, model itself, right? So the, the parent model, I can actually edit the parent model. But it also means that I can edit other models as well, right? Very similar to the admin where I can have other query sets on this page too. So in other words, we can have multiple query set forms on here, multiple model forms on here, which is, I think it's great. I mean, it's really cool how easy all of that is. But now we have a big challenge or seemingly a big challenge. And that has to do with adding additional data, right? So when we did that looping through, when we did you know this method right here of adding in all the forms like that, what we have currently is actually not a whole lot different than this. So there's no way for me to actually add additional forms yet. So we need to look in how to actually go about doing that.